All right, so here is part two of our energy discussion. Hopefully you've already watched the first video where we reviewed a little bit about what energy is to begin with and then did some practice with applying our knowledge of potential energy. So this I almost said episode. I guess it is kind of like episodes. Um, this video is going to be about kinetic energy, which is a little bit different. So kinetic energy has to do with motion. So the amount of kinetic energy that an object has is related to the mass of the object and how fast it's moving, the velocity of that moving object. So any examples that you can think of that involve motion somehow would apply here. So if you play a sport that involves a ball, anytime that ball is moving would show that it has kinetic energy. Or if you like to ride roller coasters, um, any point on that ride where you're like flying down a hill or moving up a hill, spinning around, any type of those actions would be kinetic energy, jumping rope. Um, so anything that you can think of that involves some type of action would be kinetic energy. So we have a formula to learn for this one as well. And um, unfortunately, I tried to work around with this formatting here and I'm realizing that it's a little off. So this needs to be like a superscript where the number is up. So we're gonna have mass times velocity squared and that's all divided by two. And I think on your paper it's written better than it is here on this PowerPoint. Um, another way you might see this is 0.5 mass times velocity squared. Um, the way I usually do it in class is this original one that shows division here instead of using decimals because I know that sometimes it's confusing to use a decimal. If you prefer that though, feel free to use this other option. It's totally up to you as long as you are using that correct form of the equation and you don't get it all mixed up. The SI unit, so the metric system unit we use here is the same as potential energy. We're going to use a joule and that is abbreviated with a capital J. So let's apply our new equation. We have a, a kinetic energy problem for wagons and we have three different ones we're going to compare here. The first one is a 10 kilogram wagon and it's moving at a velocity or a speed of five meters per second. So every second it goes forward another five meters. We want to know its kinetic energy. So our first step is to write out the formula so we know exactly what we're working with. Um, and so we're going to see half in terms of this division symbol. Um, and again, this is just how I write it. There are a couple other versions that you can use if that makes more sense to you. So our mass here is 10, our velocity is 5, and we square the velocity number here. So if we want to simplify this a little more, I'm going to say 1 half of 10, and in my head I could say that's 5, and then 5 squared, might not necessarily need a calculator for that, hopefully you already know that 5 squared is 25. So this step is pretty easy, you can just plug it all in, 1 half of 10, is 5 and times 25 is 125 joules. So be sure you write all these steps down in your notes so that way you're getting some practice with this with me. All right, wagon B is a 20 kilogram wagon. It's moving at 5 meters per second. So if they were to be um, traveling together on the same course, they would be moving at the same rate. They would be right next to each other, except this one is just twice as massive. So again, we're looking for kinetic energy and we know that's half of the mass times the velocity squared. So my mass this time is 20, so half of 20 would be like 10, and then I've got again a velocity of 5, so I'm squaring that number. So I'll simplify this a little more to make it easier to throw into the calculator. And when I do, I've got 10 times 25 which gives you 250. Now you might not have needed the calculator for that. Hopefully you can start to do some of this in your head, but it's nice to check with the calculator. So just looking from A to B, you should notice that our numbers have doubled. Originally it was 125 joules, and this time it's 250 joules. So between these two examples, we've doubled the mass. And so we're going to um, take this concept to the very end. 
Last wagon here is back to the original mass of 10 kilograms. This time it's moving with twice the velocity. So we're going to see what this does to affect the overall kinetic energy. I'm back to 10 with my number to plug in for m, and now I've got 10 to plug in for my v. So I'll just say half of 10 is 5. I should have done that for the other two. Um, and then 10 squared is 100. So really, again, you don't really need a calculator for this. 5 times 100 is 500 joules. So finally, we want to just make some connections here with how mass and velocity affect your kinetic energy in relation to each other. So when I look at the mass being doubled, so that's from example A to example B, originally I had 125 joules, and then I had 250 joules when I doubled the mass. So if I double mass... What happens here to my kinetic energy? You should notice that this second number is double the first. So if I double mass, I double my kinetic energy. Now if I double velocity, that's going from example A to example C. So originally, again, I had 125. Example C went all the way up to 500 joules. If you think about that for a second and try to figure out how they're related, what I multiplied by 25 to get 500, maybe you could take a calculator for a second. Oops, double velocity. This means I'm going to quadruple my energy. Quadruple, if you have like a quadrilateral, it has four sides. So quadruple means I multiplied it by four. The whole reason is when velocity is doubled, I'm still squaring that number. So 2 squared would be times 4. And that gives us the reason we have that at the very end. So when we're back in class, we're going to do some practice with this math because I know sometimes we're a little intimidated by formulas and numbers and everything. So we'll have plenty of practice to make sure you understand it. We'll also apply this in a lab where we do some calculations too. So you're going to get lots of um, real life practice with this so you can understand how we can apply this and it's not just you know something to take notes on but it actually happens every day so enjoy your evening and I will see you in class